Concept summary. Classification of lines by slope. A line with positive slope, that is m is greater than zero, rises from left to right. Rises from left, this is your left, to right. So it's rising. That's a positive slope. Any line going in that direction, any line going in this direction is positive. A line with negative slope, that is m is less than zero, falls from left to right. So here it's falling from left to right. It's falling from left, from left to right. Rising from left to right, positive. Falling from left to right, negative. So anything going in this direction, any line you see that's going like this is negative. All right? A line with zero slope, that is m is equal to zero, is horizontal. So all horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Any line that's horizontal has a slope of zero. A line with undefined slope is vertical. Any vertical line, the slope is zero. Excuse me. Any vertical line, the slope is undefined. The slope is undefined because you end up dividing by zero and dividing any number by zero is undefined. Okay, now if it's throwing you off because a lot of people forget that when you rise from left to right, they forget that sometimes or they get this confused with this. Here's another way to interpret it. Look in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, your x value is positive. Your y value is positive. Positive times a positive equals a positive. Now come down here, look in the third quadrant. Here, your x value is negative. The y value is negative. A negative times a negative equals a positive. So, in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, your values are positive. So positive then has to go in this direction. All right, so a positive slope has to be in this direction. Once again, positive here, positive there. That means any line that is going in this direction, that is going in this direction, has to be positive. Has to be positive. All right, now look here. Here, you find that your x value is negative. And the y value is positive. Well, what's a negative times a positive? A negative times a positive is a negative. Now come down, and this, that's the second quadrant. Look in the, four, uh, look in the fourth quadrant. Here, x is positive, but y is negative. Once again, what's a positive times a negative? A positive times a negative is a negative. So therefore, any line that is going in this direction has to be negative. Okay. Now, let's step over to where we get our vertical line. Now, here's where some kids get, conf get confused on the undefined. We're going to show you the undefined in a real simple uh, technique to get you to understand why divided by zero is undefined. Okay, now write down the following. You already know that slope m is equal to rise of a run. Now let's work with some numbers that we can easily figure out to, uh, to understand why dividing by zero is undefined. All right? What is 100 divided by 10? Remember now, write all these down. What is 100 divided by 10? 100 divided by 10, I think we can all agree, is going to be 10. 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2. 0 divided by 2 is going to be 0. And we all want to say that 5 divided by 0 is going to be 0. Now let's work backwards. Now we just divided. So let's work backwards and let's multiply. So 10 times 10 is 100. Everybody agree? 5 times 2 is 10. Everybody agree? 2 times 4 is 8. Everybody agree? 0 times 2 is 0. 
Everybody agree? Zero times zero should be zero, not five. That is why divided by zero is undefined. Actually, that's a simplistic reason as to why divided by zero is undefined. Zero times zero will not give you five. But zero times two will give you zero. So in other words, if you divide it by zero, undefined. If zero has been divided by another number, that's going to be zero. And remember now, for a vertical line, the x value is always the same. Well, what is the x value? The x value is the run. That's the number on the bottom. And that's why that cannot be zero. For vertical lines, slope is undefined. Horizontal lines, slope is zero. Rate of change. A rate of change compares a change in one quantity to a change in another quantity. For example, if you are paid $60 for working five hours, then your hourly wage is $12 per hour. A rate of change that describes how your pay increases with respect to time spent working. Example five, find a rate of change. Internet cafe. The table below shows the cost of using a computer at an internet cafe for a given amount of time. Find the rate of change in cost with respect to time. Time is in hours, cost is in dollars. So two dollars, excuse me, two hours would cost seven dollars, four hours would cost fourteen dollars, and six hours would cost twenty-one dollars. Solution rate of change. So the rate of change is going to be the change in cost over the change in time. Don't forget time is almost always an independent variable and is always on the x-axis. All right, so here this is your x value and this is your y value. So you're going to use your formula. Okay. The same formula that you use for slope, for slope you can use that for rate of change, and that is M M is equal to Y sub two minus Y sub one over X sub two minus X sub one. So right here, this is your Y sub two. And this is your y sub 1, this is your x of 2, and this is your x of 1. All right, so now you write this down so you can plug in. So no, now notice the change. All right, now notice your change. Ready? y sub 2, that's 14. y sub 1, that's 7. y sub 2, 14. y sub 1, 7 x of 2 is 4. x of 1 is 2. So I end up with 14 minus 7 is equal to 7 over 14 minus 2, and that's equal to 2. But what's 7 divided by 2? 3.5. So the rate of change in cost is $3.50 per hour. $3.50 per hour, per hour. Don't forget, this was the dollar figure on top. And this was the time on the bottom. In other words, y over x. All right, now also notice that had you picked these two values, you still would have came out with the same answer. See, uh, 21 minus 14 is 7. OK, 6 minus 4 is 2. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So you would have came out with the same value. Okay, also notice if you were to say 21 minus 7, that would give you 14. 6 minus four, or 2 would give you 4. 14 divided by 4 ends up being 3.5. 4 goes into 14 three times, so I give you 12. 14 minus 12 is 2. So the answer is 3 and 2 over 4. And then 2 over 4, when you reduce it and then convert it to a decimal, is 3.5. All right?
And some of you may be noticing that also, that you can actually divide directly. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. 14 divided by 4 is 3.5. And 21 divided by 6 is 3.5. All right, you can see, so you can see that 21 divided by 6. 6 goes into 21 three times. 3 times 6 is 18. 21 minus 18 is 3. So you end up with 3 and 3 over 6, which reduces to 3 and a half, which, which means 3.5. All right, and that concludes today's lesson.